Welcome to the Light Factory and Neo Mobile Interface Builder. The Mobile Interface Builder is a simple tool to create custom interfaces for use on your mobile device to operate or control a Light Factory or Neo lighting control system. With this application, you can create your own layout of buttons, sliders, and switches for end user interaction with your show or installation. The mobile app side of the system is supported on both Android and iOS devices in both phone and tablet form factors. On the left of this video is the Mobile Interface Builder application, running on Microsoft Windows 10. I started this from the Windows Start menu and navigated to the Light Factory or Neo PC Start menu. If you are using a Neo console, you will find the Mobile Interface Builder on the first page of the System Control Panel. The Interface Builder application can also be used on any Mac running OS X, however you will need to copy the interface files to your Light Factory or Neo system to be served to mobile devices. This video does not cover this process, except to say that the mobile interface files are no different to any other file on the hard disk and can be copied and moved using network connections, memory sticks or any other means. On the right of my screen, I have a mirrored view of my 7-inch tablet connected to the system. This happens to be a Samsung Galaxy device. However, the interface and navigation of the application itself is identical between all hardware. After all, the actual interface is what you make it to be. I am using a product called Visor to mirror the tablet screen in Windows for the purpose of this demo. Now, let's get started. The first important concept with the Mobile Interface Builder is that each layout file can contain four different form factor layouts. These are Tablet Portrait, Tablet Landscape, Phone Portrait, and Phone Landscape. As we change the form factor by pressing these buttons, the layout surface on the left changes to show us what we are working with. The surface is where we will build the interface. If you want your interface to run on both phone and tablet form factors, you must build the interface for each. The system will not scale an interface built for a tablet down to a phone. If you don't build an interface for either landscape or portrait, then the mobile app will lock the orientation of the device to the interface you have created. Building the interface is exactly the same in all four options, so for this video we will only focus on building one for tablets in portrait mode. Above the form factor button is an optional space to name the layout and an option to provide a PIN number. If a PIN number is saved with the layout, then the end user will be required to enter this number before they gain access to the interface you have created. For this example, we're going to set a simple PIN number of 1234. The first thing we are going to add to our layout is an image. Click on the Add Image button and a small logo will appear on the layout surface. Click anywhere in the image under the item properties to select a different picture from the system. Below the image we just clicked on is an option to keep proportions. When this is on, the image will maintain the aspect ratio of the source. Using the mouse, I can now reposition or resize the image how I want it. When any item is selected, holding the left mouse button down will move it around the surface. Use the eight black dots to resize the selected item. Next, we will set a different background color for the layout using the selection tool. Create a text label by clicking on the Add Label button and use the controls below Item Properties to set the text, size, and color of our label, and then position the text just as we did with the image. Now we are going to add items that do the interaction with the lighting controller. This includes buttons, sliders and switches. Before doing this, turn on the checkbox labelled Snap Positions to help us line up the controls. This will give us less freedom of movement but make it easy to have everything appear in line with each other. Click the Add button and notice that a simple push button is added to the centre of the surface. Set the item properties for this as we did with the label. For this button, we're going to call it Day Mode. Now position it as required. With a button, there is one very important property called Shortcut. The Shortcut field sets the Light Factory or Neo shortcut that will be executed when the button is pressed. 
when the user clicks the button, a message is sent to the Light Factory controller to execute the action assigned to that shortcut. For my first button, I will use shortcut 1. At this point, it's worth noting that you can place controls on top of each other. This means that our button could, if we want it to, be on top of an image. This allows you to create an image that takes up the entire screen and still place any of the controls you want on top of it. Right click on a selected control and you will get a small pop-up menu for send to back or bring to front. This allows you to set what appears on top when you do have overlapping controls. I'm now going to add two more buttons and assign them to fire shortcuts 2 and 3 on the lighting controller. Next, use the Add Slider button to add a slider control to the surface. Just as the button control had a shortcut that could be assigned, the slider control is mapped to a submaster in the lighting system. When the slider is moved, the value generated will be sent to the lighting system as a submaster movement. Like the other controls, we can position and size the fader as we need. For the purpose of this demo, I will add a few submasters to the layout surface, giving each one a unique submaster number and also adding a label above each one using the Add Label button. Finally, we will add a simple switch to the bottom of the surface. Click on the Add Switch button and move it to the appropriate position. For the switch control, we need to assign a group ID. When a switch is toggled, the corresponding group in the lighting software will toggle its state. In this case, we will use group 6. Like the slider control, I will also add a label to identify what the switch does. Now that our layout is created, it must be saved to the system. Click on the Save As button to open a standard operating system save dialog. The dialog will default to the Documents, Mobile Interfaces folder. While you can save your files anywhere you want, the Mobile Interfaces folder is the location that layouts are served from. Any layout saved elsewhere will not be visible in the mobile application. Give the layout an appropriate name and click on the Save button. You can use the four buttons at the top of the right panel to create a new layout, load an existing layout for editing, or save the layout you currently have open to a different name. If changes have been made to the layout, the Save button will be active. This can then be used to quickly save your work under the same file name showing in the title bar of the application. Now that our layout has been saved, it is time to test it on a device. Launch the My Interface application on your mobile device and after loading, you should see a small list showing all of the interfaces found on the system. Click on the demo layout that we created, and this list disappears and is replaced with a pin number entry pad. If no pin number was set up, then this will not show, and the layout we created will be immediately shown. For this example, I enter my pin number 1234, and the layout is shown. I will close the Interface Builder application so we can see the live display in the console. In this example, I have only mapped two submasters, so the remaining sliders do not perform any function. Finally, to exit this layout and return to the layout selection list, press on the four corners of the device. Back at the layout list, we can now select a different layout. There is no limit to the number of layouts that can be created and made visible. I hope you enjoy using this application to build end user interfaces for iOS and Android devices.